In this video, we're going to finish the routing of our board by completing the power traces, and I'm going to show you how we can do a cross under when we absolutely need to. And we're going to find in some cases, routing traces on in a single layer is sometimes a bit of a topology puzzle, and that makes it kind of fun and entertaining as well. And so we'll see an example of doing that. Here's where we left off with our board. I think I've got all the diodes and resistors in the test points. I think I've got um, the switch over here. Uh, we need to wire up the power. And the power is going to be, we want to have that at least 20 mils wide. Not because we've got more than 3 amps we're going to be carrying through here, but it helps us distinguish what are power nets at a glance because they're going to be the wider nets. So we grab our interactive routing tool. I don't know what line width it's set for. We'll see. We're going to connect up our power paths over here, over here, and over to the IC. Let's see, we grab the center, we route it over to our signal line over here, and we can see, uh-oh, it's a narrow line. So let's, since we're going to do power paths, let's set our default line width to be 20 mils. So again, we grab our interactive routing tool, we're in that mode, we push tab to pause it, it brings up the properties page, we're going to make this 20 mils. And now our default line width is going to be 20 mils because we're going to be routing power paths. So now we come along and we connect from this power, the power jack, to the first uh, capacitor. Then we go from the capacitor to the uh, LED indicator. And then from the LED indicator to the resistor. And we've already got a ground via over here. And again, it's not so much that we're going to draw much current because after all, we're going to be limited by the uh, the 1K resistor here, but it just gives us um, an indication of oh, that's a power path. And now you'll notice also that, you know, I've got the uh, return via, the ground via for the capacitor. And, you know, generally, if I want low inductance, I want that to be a wide trace as well. And so it might be worthwhile for me to come in here, remove the trace that's there, and I'm just going to replace it with, I've already got the, um, the routing tool set for 20 mils. I'm just going to give us a great big whopping 20 mil pad there. And then continuing along, I've got a pad over here. I need to go to my switch. And this is going to be the off on switch for the um, 555 timer. I got another connection over here. And you'll notice, hey, the same thing. Look, there's no reason. You know, part of the idea of having low inductance in this path is short wide traces. I get this really narrow trace for the return. The only downside of using a wide trace for the um, for the ground via is if it's too wide, it may suck heat out of the pad when I solder. But I don't think a 20 mil pad, especially uh, this geometry, is going to be that much of a problem. So I'm willing to put it in. So here's our 20 mil wide pad. And where else do we have power? Oh, from the resistor over here. It goes to, let's see, this is, I think, pin 4, the reset pin, and then it goes to power over here. So I've got a pretty much straight path for the resistor. So again, we're going to come up here. We're going to shoot across and come over to the uh, resistor over here. So I've got power path over here. I still have this guy here to connect to power. And, um, you know, there's a pretty direct path um, going this way. So let me grab him, and we'll just go right into... Let's see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the jogs a little bit cleaner. And there we go. So let's see, I've got um, power, I've got power, uh, and I've got the capacitor over here. Everything else is connected. Oh, one last connection. I've got my test point over here. So again, I'm going to use, even though I don't need it, I'm going to use the wide conductor because that's going to help tell me remind me that, oh yeah, that's a power path. So at a glance, I look at my board and I can immediately tell what are the signal paths, what are the power paths. The last step is, I did the low-hanging fruit here. This is easy, this is quick, and it was a lot of fun. Now we have the challenge. I gotta do the routing over here. So let's zoom in in this region. And again, because it's signals only, and I wanna give myself the best chance of success in routing, I'm gonna change my default line width for the interactive routing tool, I want that to be six mils. So I've grabbed that tool, I push tab, that pauses it and opens up the um, properties page for that tool. I come over here and I make it six mils, 
And I push enter and I've locked it in. Now it's six mils. Now we're going to do the routing. Well, let's see. Oh, here's some easy stuff. This is low hanging fruit. I should have done this before. That's the easy stuff. Let's see. Now, what else do I have? Here is the, um, here's the capacitor. I, I need to connect the discharge of the capacitor, and that's on, um, I don't remember. Let's see, where is that going? Oh, that's going to this pin over here. So let me, um, uh, let's see, if I do that. Um, yeah, sure, let's do that. So here's the discharge line. I'm going to come over here to this pin. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, uh, let's see, the output. Here's the output. Uh, gosh, you know, I've blocked over here. I need to go from this output pin over to the switch. Oh, gosh, how am I going to do that? I mean, I'm, I've, I'm blocked over here. And so here's where, again, it's a little topology problem. If I snake around, carefully avoiding everything automatically, if I snake around, oh, look, I can do it that way. Now I don't want to go through that long path. So let's, um, let's give myself a little bit of extra room here. And we make contact. And we're in. Wow, that was easy. I still have two more traces to route. I've got this guy has to go to here. Oh my gosh, how am I going to do that? I, I've kind of drawn myself in a, in a closed box here. It's going to be a convoluted path. Can I get from here over to here? Oh gosh, I guess I could if I went all the way over here, along here, through here. I don't know, maybe I can't. This is where the puzzles come in. You can maybe experiment around. See, can you find a path to connect? Let's see, I need to go from this pin over here to this guy. Is there a way of doing that? I don't know. If I, if I try to use the tool to do it, uh, you know, it's not going to get me over there. Oh gosh. Is there a convoluted? Oh, look, there is a convoluted path. I could do that. That's, you know, that's a really awkward path. I don't really want to do that. Instead, I'm going to use a cross under. And uh, let's see, all I have to do is I want to route from this pin, from this pin to this pin. And so if I just come down here, do a crossover or a cross under this guy, and then I'll need another cross under here. I could get over there. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to route from this pin. We're just going to come off. Here's where I'm going to put my cross under. So I'm going to click to end that line. Now I want to switch. I want to switch to uh, the bottom layer, to route on the bottom layer. I need to push tab to pause. I need to come over here and say, switch my focus to the bottom layer. It automatically gave me a via. I'm on the bottom layer. I need to get out of pause and I push escape to get out of pause. Now I'm routing on the bottom layer. Can you see, if you look really close, there's a faint blue line on the bottom layer. All I have to do is get a little bit far away. Now I could route everything on the bottom layer and get over there, but that would give me a big gap in the return path. That's the last thing I want to do. And so instead, I'm going to I've put a little line segment to get me under that trace on the bottom layer. I'm going to uh, push tab to pause it. I'm going to change my focus to go back to the top. I've got myself another via on the, on the, to bring me to the top layer. I'm sitting here at the top layer at that via point. I push escape to get out of my pause mode. And hey, I'm just going to route another trace. And where's it going to go? Oh, gosh. I could. That's a damn awkward way of doing it. But, you know, maybe that's not such a bad way of doing it. Um, hey, you know what? I'll take it. So um, I had to go under here to get across and over here. And look, I just went under here to, to make this connection here. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm still in the interactive routing mode. I'm going to push escape to get out of it. And I'm just going to help this guy. I know I have a 10 mil clearance. That's perfectly fine. But hey, I've got plenty of room. I'm going to highlight that line. I'm just going to pull it out a little bit more. Let's see if I highlight this segment here. And I'm just moving it because I can. I've got a little bit of extra room here. There we go. Um, again, don't have to. Got plenty of room. Not a problem. Now, I still have one more trace. I got to do this guy over here. Got to make that connection there. Uh, and um, 
but before we do that, you notice it looks really funny here. Where is my cross under? Well, remember what we did. We made a trace in the ground plane, but it's not really a ground plane, it's a copper fill. And in order to adjust for the extra trace, I have to re-pour the copper on the bottom layer. So here's how we do it. We highlight the bottom layer. It's highlighted. We click on the bottom copper fill, and now we want to re-pour. And there are a couple ways of getting there. I like a right mouse click, and we go to Polygon Action, and we find Report Selected. And there it is. Now we've still highlighted the bottom copper pour, so I click once to unhighlight it, and there is our cross under. We go to the top, we see that path, and we're done. Looks great. Now, I have one more trace to route. I gotta get to this guy here. And again, I've boxed myself in a corner. I can't get from this pad to this pad any easy way. And so, and, a, and so, you know, if I could just do a cross under here, that would do it for me, but I wanna keep that path really short. I wanna keep this path really short as well. You could say, well, what about the return path for um, the trigger out of the 555? Isn't that important? Yes, but here's the small discontinuity we've made. The return current's underneath this signal line, and then when it gets over here, it can't get across the gap. It just snakes over this very short path on this side and on this side. If we had a long cross under that made a long gap, that would be something to worry about, a large discontinuity. But this is a really short discontinuity. Generally, if we keep it less than half an inch, nothing to worry about, at least for any of the designs that we're working on. So I don't care too much about this one. I did that cross under just fine. Need to add another one over here. So let's do the same thing. So we're going to route the same trick we did before. We're going to come across. We're going to plop a via. Um, we're going to uh, shoot across and we're going to plop a via and then we're going to come up and make connection. So let's try that. So we grab our interactive routing tool, we come across, we stop, we pause with tab, we change our focus, that pops a via to the bottom layer, we're on the bottom layer, we use escape to get out of pause, we route across on the bottom layer, we get across that, um, uh, that um, uh, power line, here we are on the other side. We end the trace. We type tab to pause us. We change our focus back to the top layer. We pop a via on the top layer. We're on the top layer. And now we push escape to get out of the pause mode. And we route our trace up above and into our signal line. And there we go. And so we've made our connection a little via uh, crossing the power line. And again, it's not a very large gap. The return for this power, of course, is going only over to the reset, so it's a DC voltage, there's hardly any current. We always wanna be thinking about that. Um, we ha we're gonna have a little gap here. The return current for this guy would have to snake around that gap, get on the other side. Again, very short distance, not a big problem. And so let's take a look at uh, the bottom copper layer. So again, we've, um, uh, we have to uh, escape to clear our cursor. We move to the bottom layer. That changes the focus to the bottom layer. We click to highlight that uh, copper fill, that polygon. Right mouse click to bring up polygon action. And we're going to re-pour selected layer. And there we go. And we're going to click once to unhighlight the bottom polygon pour. And now we change our focus to the top. And there's our path. Now, we have a little extra via here we're gonna get rid of. And so here we've used two cross-unders in order to simplify the routing for us. And if we zoom out, let's see, is there anything else that we need to, to do? I think we've done all the routing. And um, again, we used uh, some clever topology uh, in order to kind of snake us around to get to the places that we wanted. Um, we might have been able to just as well of come out this way, have another cross under, uh, and then shot across. That might have been another path to do. Again, multiple right answers. Keep in mind that as long as we have a continuous return plane under the signal lines, we'll have great signal quality, we'll have very little noise on those lines. Perfectly okay to do. And now I think we're done. 
The next step is we need to do a design rule check just to verify we've got everything the way we want, and that's what we're going to start in the next video.